Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's up on me. It enables me to do what I came here to do. And he wouldn't operate without the Holy Spirit. And we shouldn't either. Amen? If we want to have an effective ministry, if we want to have an effective witnessing in our life, it's going to have to be by the power of God. Zechariah 4 and 6 is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It's only through God's spirit that anything of lasting value will be accomplished. Amen? Amen. Our trust has to be in the power of the Holy Spirit, not in our own abilities. I don't care how many degrees you got. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to do the will of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit is so vital. But yet and still, there's a whole lot of debate in the world today over the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Why do people say that, that, that miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for today? When the Bible clearly says that it is. But one reason people say that is, they, is because it gives them an excuse for not having any power in their life. See, if, if, if you're not operating on the power of the Holy Spirit, you have no power. Nobody wants to admit that their lives are the result of the choices that they made. And I know that James and I, we made some bad choices in the, first, in the uh, beginning of our marriage. And even in, in the beginning of our walk with God. Amen. But we've come into the knowledge of a lot of things, and we're still growing, we'll continue to grow, amen? amen? And we don't make a lot of the same mistakes that we made a long time ago, amen? amen? Because this walk with God just gets better and better. Amen. And you can get the wisdom from His Word to learn how to not make the same mistakes over and over again. Amen. It's easier to say the Holy Spirit is a movement today like he did in Bible times. People want to say that. They want to say that I tried that faith stuff and that faith stuff doesn't work. But faith does work. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, anything that's going to work is going to have to work by faith because without faith it's impossible to please God. you got to have it. Amen. We have to renew our mind with the word of God. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can't insist on doing things our own way. Now, a lot of people read the Bible and they want to sort through the Bible and they want to do this and not do that. Or I believe this and I don't believe that. You have to believe the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. I believe the whole Bible from Genesis to Amen. Matt. Amen. Amen. It's all true. It's all good. People will often try to change the word of God to make it support their belief instead of letting the word of God change them. Right. Amen. Amen. God is not going to line up with our plans. He's not going to line up with our agenda. We're going to have to do his will like my brother-in-law always says, and we're going to have to do it his way. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to take responsibility for our actions. We have to make the necessary changes in our lives to line up with God's word. The Holy Spirit is very much still moving today. Amen. And we should be living victorious lives. Amen? Amen? Some Christians limit the ministry of the Holy Spirit to just being the carpenter. But he's more than that. Mm -hmm. He's our intercessor. He's our helper. He's our strengthener. He's our standby. Hey, he's yeah. all that. Amen? All that. It's miraculous Thank power. You. you can't deny it if you believe in miracles. Mm -hmm. And I believe in miracles. I expect to see miracles every time I come into the house of God. Amen. I expect to see miracles in my life day by day. Yeah. Amen? And we believe. Yeah. Amen. Matter of fact, we are miracles. Mm -hmm. The greatest miracle of all is a transformed life. Mm -hmm. The greatest miracle of all is knowing that the word of God and the grace of God has changed all of us from what we used to be. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? But there is a second experience of the power of the Holy Spirit that should be operating in our lives. Once we get saved, the Holy Spirit moves into us. He moves to live on the inside of us. But there is a second experience, and it's called by some people the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He is in you. You receive him at salvation. Amen. But his power coming up on you is a separate experience. Yes, and Romans 8, 16, where it reads that the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit, that should read the Spirit himself, not itself, That's right. bears witness with our spirit. <clears throat> when we receive salvation, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of us, and he should become more real to us every day. Mm -hmm. Every day you ought to talk to him. I wake up in the morning every speaking day. to him, good morning, Holy Spirit. Amen. I acknowledge Him in all your ways. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And He'll become more real to you every day. Every born again believer can experience His indwelling spirit. 
The Holy Spirit is a powerful person. He's on our side. He's working for us and in us, amen, to accomplish the will and the purposes of God. By faith, we appropriate his power each day as we fellowship with him. Let's look at John 16, John 16 and 7. Acknowledge him through the day. Ask his opinion. Amen. 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 That's his job to lead and guide us into all truth. John 16 and 7. And this is Jesus speaking. How do you know? It's in the red. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now the word expedient in this verse means to your advantage. It means to your benefit. And Jesus was saying that it would benefit us more, it would be more to our advantage that he went back to heaven. Right. I mean, a lot of us wouldn't want him to go back if we could keep him right here and hold his hand and look across at him as we eat breakfast in the morning. Amen. Mm -hmm. We'd be able to see him and be able to touch him. But see, Jesus had a mission when he came to earth. Amen? Amen. He came to earth to be about the Father's business. Amen. He came to sacrifice his life for our sins. If he hadn't died, he couldn't have atoned for our sins. Amen. But he did die. Amen? Amen? But he knew he wouldn't didn't come to stay. That's why he borrowed, uh, uh, I mean, Joseph loaned him his tomb. Because he was only going to be in it, what, three days? Uh, Amen? Uh, he didn't die to stay. He couldn't have defeated death, hell, and the grave if he hadn't came up out of that grave. Amen. But he did get up. Glory be to God. Woo. Jesus' presence on earth limited him to be in one place at a time. Why? Because he was in a physical body. All right? But through the precious Holy Spirit, he could be present in every believer at the same time. Amen. How great is our God. Hallelujah. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. Amen. 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 He's omniscient. Thank you. What an awesome God we serve. Amen. Amen. It was to our benefit that he went to heaven so that he could send us the conferences. When he finished his work on this earth, he said, it is finished. Jesus was done. Amen. 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 Right. We should recognize the importance of the Holy Spirit's ministry and the power that's available to us through Him. Mm -hmm. Now, there are many examples in the Bible where the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit enables believers to live supernatural lives. And that's the only way we're going to do this Christian walk is through the power of the Holy Spirit and by the grace of God. And I tell people, this walk is impossible. They tell me, it's hard to live the Christian life. I say, no, baby, it's impossible to do it without the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But in Him and through Him, we can do all things. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes. There are many examples in the Bible where the Holy Spirit enables believers to live those supernatural lives. Because we are not just natural. Amen. We are supernatural. Amen. The Bible calls us peculiar people. Yeah. So when I call, come up to you and say, you know, you acting kind of peculiar. That ain't no answer. Hallelujah. God calls us peculiar. Amen. We are a chosen generation. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. Hallelujah. Daniel 11.32 says that people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Do you know him? Yeah. The Amplified says the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall stand firm and do exploits for God. See, knowing God is not just having a head knowledge about Him. It's having a heart knowledge about Him. Amen? Amen. Not because you heard somebody preach about Him. Not because your grandmother or somebody told you about Him. You know Him for yourself. Yeah. You spend time with Him. Amen? Amen? That's knowing God. Remember I shared that word intimacy with you um, last week? God wants saying to us, I want you into me. Right, right, right. I like that word. <laughs> I like having a personal relationship with him. I yes, like knowing yes, I can yes, talk to yes, my father yes. all day long. Amen? Oh, amen? He'll never put you on hold. You'll never get called away. Yep. Amen? He's available to us all day long. That's knowing God. That's having an intimate relationship with Him. You love to read His Word. You love to pray. You love to do His will. That's knowing God. 
Amen. 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 Anything we do for the Lord shouldn't be a burden. No. That's why when I hear people say, I got a burden for them, I say, no, baby, this is a burden you don't need to be doing. Because mm -hmm. God will give you sweat and his victory. Yes. He'll give you power through the Holy Spirit to do anything that he has called you to do. Amen? Amen. One of my confessions in the morning is Colossians 1 and 9. And it says, I am filled with the knowledge of God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. I confess that before I read my word, saying I'm filled. That means I'm asking the Holy Spirit to fill me with yes. the knowledge of God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen? Amen. Why? Because the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Mm -hmm. See, David knew his God. David knew God was with him when he killed the bear. Yep. David knew that God was with him when he killed the lion. Mm -hmm. If you go and take a lamb out of hungry lion's mouth, mm -hmm. you better know that God is with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. David knew that God was with him when he killed That's Goliath. Right. And we have to know that God is with us when we mm -hmm. face the giants in our lives. Mm -hmm. Giants of death. Giants of sickness. Amen? You got to know that the Lord is with you. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Now, Jesus taught about two separate experiences in the believer's life concerning the Holy Spirit. And John 20, you don't have to go there, John 20, 28, Thomas confessed Jesus as his Lord and God. See, the first time Jesus appeared to the disciples, Thomas wasn't with them. So the disciples told Thomas, said, he's alive. Thomas said, I don't believe that. He said, I'm not going to believe it until I see the nail prints in his hands and when they pierced him in his side. So the second time he appeared to the uh, disciples, he made sure that Thomas was in the room. And Thomas saw him and he said, my Lord, my God. He believed. See, once he believed, he was saved. Amen? According to Romans 10 and 9, it says, that the thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus yeah. and shall believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. So Thomas was saved right then. Amen? Amen. But Jesus told them, to carry. He told them to wait until they received the promise of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Right. That's a separate experience from being born again. Let's look at Acts the first chapter. Acts the first chapter. The first experience is when you get saved, the Holy Spirit right then comes to indwell you. Mm -hmm. But there's a second experience called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes up on you. Acts, the first chapter, we're going to look at verses 4 and 5. Praise the Lord. If you dare say amen. amen. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, you have heard of me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. See, they had to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to come up on them. They had already been baptized in water, but they hadn't been baptized by the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 8, Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, up on you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That power that comes upon us when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. It gives us ability. It gives us might. It gives us confidence. It gives us boldness. Amen. Amen. You'll find yourself witnessing the people, and you'll find yourself quoting scripture. You say, well, where did that come from? The Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. When you start and put that word in, the Holy Ghost will bring it to your remembrance. Amen? Amen? So that's something we should all desire. We need these gifts to do what God has called us to do in the earth. Amen. Glory be to God. That's why uh, I, I think it's Timothy that said that God didn't give us um, a spirit of fear. You know, we're not to be timid. We're not to have a spirit of cowardice about us. We're to be bold. Mm -hmm. Amen? Be bold Amen. in the Lord. God got your back. If you say his word, if you do what his word says, he'll never fail you. Okay. Amen? Amen? Glory be to God. This gospel began with the Jews in Jerusalem and Judea. It then spread to the mixed race in Samaria. And now this gospel is available to whosoever will believe. 
Amen. Twelve men set that whole uh, uh, area back in that time on fire. Yes. And there's so many more of us today. That's why the Bible says greater works will you do. Well, it don't get no greater than raising the dead. So it wasn't talking about greater in that sense, but greater because there's more of us. Right. Amen. To take this gospel out to the people that are hurting and don't know that Jesus Christ is Lord. There's a lot of hurting people. I see them when I'm in the stores. I see people walking walking down the street with their heads hung down like they have no hope. We need to tell them there is hope in God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. When you ain't got no hope, you ain't got nothing to live for. Nothing. But there is hope in Christ. Amen. 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 After the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came up on the disciples, they were powerful. They faced persecution and death fearlessly. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is what made all the difference. Good. And Acts the eighth chapter still a priest of Samaritans and they believed on Jesus Christ and were baptized in water. They were saved now, but they had not received the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They had water baptism after they believed. Let's look at Acts the eighth chapter. Acts the eighth chapter, we're gonna look at verses fourteen through seventeen. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard, see faith comes out by hearing. Mm -hmm. When the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, verse 15, Acts 8, 15, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. All believers receive the spirit of adoption when they get saved. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. That's your guarantee that you belong to Father. That's your guarantee that you've been adopted and grafted into the family of God. That's your guarantee that now you can say, Abba. Father. Amen? Amen? That happens the minute you get saved. You are a child of God. So the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of us when we get saved. But after that, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to come up on us. Amen. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receiving the Holy Spirit in this verse means receiving the supernatural gifts of the Spirit for service to do the work of God. That Amen. boldness, that might, that confidence. Amen. I, believe it or not, I used to be bashful. You know, I was like, I ain't gonna let God to me. But I'm no longer bashful. I'll go up to a total stranger and try to introduce them to Jesus Christ. You know why? Because their soul means more to me than my own embarrassment or their rejection. They ain't rejecting me, they're rejecting Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But I used to wouldn't do it because I was afraid. I was timid. But I am no longer timid. I am my baby. You never believe that. You never believe that. Because souls are so important. Amen. We watch people around us dying and going to hell every day. That shouldn't be. We need to get out the boat and start walking on the water. Paul also found disciples who were not baptized in the Holy Ghost. He prayed for them and they spoke with tongues. Now, there were some believers who acknowledged the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they refused to believe speaking in tongues. They say that speaking in tongues isn't for everyone, and that is not for us today. That's not what the Bible says. Let's look at Mark 16. Mark 16, we're going to look at verses 17 and 18. <clears throat> and this is Jesus speaking. And he said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they take up any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The operative word in this verse is believe. Amen. See, if you can believe that you can cast out devils, if you can believe you can lay hands on the sick and they recover, why can't you believe you can speak in tongues? Amen. It's all in the same verse, amen? amen. Every word that comes out of God's mouth is the truth. Yes. When yes. Jesus was praying for the disciples in John 17, 17, he said, sanctify them through thy word. Thy yes. word is true. Amen. amen. But a lot of Christians, uh, a lot of believers think that they're getting something from the devil. 
But Luke 11, 13 says, Father God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It ain't a bunch of spooky ooky stuff. It's real. It's real. Let's look at Acts 2, 1 and 4, 1 through 4. I hope I can get through this. Give me two more minutes. Acts the second chapter, verses 1 through 4. It's so important that we recognize it's two separate experiences. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live in, in, on the inside of you right then. But then you're waiting for that second experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where the power of God comes up on you. Acts 2, 1 through 4, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And that's my desire for this church, that we can all get on one accord, Amen. that we can stop nitpicking and criticizing and come together in love. Amen. So we can see the power of God manifesting in this congregation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 2, and suddenly, you know I like to say that. <laughs> Every time I see and suddenly in the Bible, it lets me know that God can change my circumstances in one minute. Right, Amen. 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 One word, one word from God can turn everything around. Yes. Glory be to God. You can be looking at a pile of bills one minute and suddenly be a million at the next minute. Right, That's the now. kind of God we serve. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Not the devil. Amen. 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 God did it. God Verse 4 in the New Living Translation said, And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. Amen. Amen. God wants us all to have this experience. Yes. Do you have to speak in tongues? No. 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 You get to speak in tongues. Amen. 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 Give God some praise. Amen. Worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 Worthy to God. Take a few minutes and love on somebody and tell them how glad you are to see them this morning. Yeah, 